Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Friday out there. Hope we all had a wonderful first week of October here. And let me tell you, it's really going to feel like October over the next couple of days as this powerful cold front swings on through the lower 48. So a lot of folks are going to go from almost summer-like conditions uh, to nearly winter-like conditions or uh, much more like November, December conditions compared to October. So again, a very big shift coming for a lot of folks. And after we get through this cold front, don't let your, uh, your guard down because going into next week, I see a pretty potent storm system combined with another powerful cold front that will once again likely sweep on through the eastern United States. So a very active start to October and things look to only continue here going into the middle and potentially even the end of October. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Our last video did very well, crested a thousand views there, and we even gained, I want to say, 10 to 15 subscribers. So uh, thank you to everyone who decided to hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. And also thank you to everyone for commenting. I also uh, love reading those comments. I'm trying to get back to you as soon as I can. If I didn't quite get to your comment, I do apologize. Uh, I am a, a college student after all, so life does get a little bit busy. Uh, with that said, though, let's go ahead and jump into things here. So uh, taking a look at satellite imagery right now, again, we kind of have almost two different fronts. We have uh, this first kind of teaser front, if you will, and then we have the real cold air with this secondary front behind it. So both of those are moving on through. A lot of folks have already kind of uh, been passed by that first part of the front, if you will, but that second part where that real cold and dry air is, is moving quickly and working its way on down towards the south and east. So do expect that to go ahead and clear on through by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon for just about everybody. Now, another important thing here on satellite imagery is what is now post-tropical cyclone Philippe. And what that means is pretty much just lost its uh, kind of warm attribu uh, attributes, excuse me, and is now kind of gaining fronts and will eventually combine with um, this cold front and this other low pressure system. And we're going to have a big time mid-latitude cyclone going into this weekend. And that is what's going to lead to accumulating snowfall for some folks up into Canada and maybe even some snow showers for folks further to the south, even into the northeastern United States. So again, very um, uh, almost even winter-like weekend in store for a lot of folks. Alrighty, so unfortunately I couldn't get radar to work. I don't know what's going on with it. It's just not functioning today. So the next best thing we have is our temperature map. And again, this does a pretty good job at showing uh, where we're kind of seeing that cold front. Again, this is that first kind of teaser front you'll notice here, but this is that real time cold air. And uh, that's where that gradient of temperatures gets very tight very quickly. And where you're going from, you know, spring like weather uh, to almost winter and fall like weather right behind it. And again, that thing is moving quickly. And I'll even loop this just a little bit for you here. <clears throat> Maybe not quite so quick so you can see it a little bit so or better but uh, either way you'll notice these uh, kind of more winter like conditions flooding into the lower 48 from Canada as that front begins to sweep on through so kind of just interesting to see there. Now, in terms of kind of watches and warnings out there, where we're seeing what, uh, we'll start off here into the Great Plains and into the Midwest. We have freeze warnings and uh, even some freeze watches there for a lot of folks. Again, likely going to get right near or below freezing tonight for a lot of folks up that way. So uh, it's definitely that time of the year now where you're not really planting all that much in this part of the country, but likely to get our first freeze of the year for a lot of folks that way. Now, further to the south and east, we do have red flag warnings for much of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and Alabama. Again, as this front swings on through, very dry and very windy conditions behind that. And that combined with the fact that we already haven't seen much rain for a lot of these places over the past couple of weeks is going to lead to some big time fire concerns. And even outside of there, kind of into the rest of the southeast, although we don't have red flag warnings, could still see some fire conditions unfold going into this weekend. And in fact, here in Charlotte, uh, we just broke our record, or not our record, but the um, streak that we were on, if you will, for driest conditions. We went 18 days without rain. This morning, though, the airport here uh, recorded a whopping 1 100th of an inch of rainfall. So, uh, you know, really digging into those drought conditions there with that. But again, for folks that aren't seeing rain right now, I do think going into next week, uh, we likely get a switch of the pattern and some big time rain could be on the way for a lot of folks in the southeast. So just kind of hang in there as we move ahead. Alrighty, so what are we seeing out there right now? Again, radar wasn't working, but our latest NAM model does a pretty good job at showing what we're seeing. Again, with that first kind of part of the front, we are seeing some showers and even uh, some you know heavier downpours, maybe even a rumble of thunder or two here as this is beginning to cross the Appalachian chain currently and will continue to do so over the next couple of hours. So again, getting a little bit of precipitation out of this, uh, especially the further north you get up into New England is where we're seeing some of those heavier downpours just because we have a little bit more lifting there in the atmosphere to help uh, that rain sustain itself. 
Now, back where we're seeing this low pressure system itself, back towards the Great Lakes, we're also seeing some showers here, and uh, we even have a small risk of some severe weather here into uh, sections of uh, western Michigan today, but Again, very low end as we don't have much instability as there's a lot of cold air here to work with, but also a lot of wind energy. So got to be careful that if any kind of storm could tap into some of that instability, uh, definitely could have the chance to become strong too severe. So definitely watching that. Now, as we move this ahead, uh, you'll notice going into tonight and this evening, that first part of the front crosses the Appalachian chain and begins to work on into the northeast. And as that happens, uh, going into... Uh, later tonight and into tomorrow morning, uh, we're also going to have, again, post-tropical cyclone Philippe out here get kind of sucked into this front up into New England and likely making uh, landfall, if you will, although, again, it's a post-tropical cyclone at that point. Um, in and around Maine. So what's going to happen is we're going to have very rainy conditions in the northeast going into tomorrow afternoon as Philippe and this front combine into one and again form a very impressive mid-latitude cyclone. So I forgot to mention this and I'll even go back and show it really quickly uh, on our other map here is we also do have some flood watches up in the main, so absolutely need to watch out for that uh, as Philippe moves inland and we get some of those other conditions uh, to unfold that could produce some uh, flooding conditions going into this weekend. So definitely watching that. Uh, going to back this up a little bit. Uh, again, Philippe going to kind of get sucked into this front as it moves up into the northeast tomorrow afternoon. But for places outside of there, kind of south of the northeast into the mid-Atlantic, the southeast, and the Ohio River Valley, tomorrow afternoon looks really nice. So again, we have to get through this first little line of showers going into tonight and into tomorrow morning. But uh, tomorrow afternoon, you'll notice uh, outside of the kind of the big mess going on in the northeast, very nice weather for all of the southeast, uh, midwest, and the Ohio River Valley with uh, very sunny conditions, although maybe quite breezy and very dry as well. So definitely looking out for that. Now, uh, now that we've talked about that, let's kind of zoom back in on the northeast a little bit. Again, tomorrow afternoon looks very rainy for the I-95 corridor from Philly up through uh, into Maine and even into upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire. And this rain is going to, you know, continue through much of the day tomorrow and into the overnight hours. That's when Philippe begins to move his way inland. So again, tomorrow, expect a rainy day and likely a breezy day, especially up into Maine going into tomorrow night as um, these you know two pieces of energy really begin to phase together the one system kind of over Ontario and then Philippe himself as these two combine into one we're going to get very breezy very raining conditions uh, for much of overnight Saturday and even into Sunday afternoon before those two kind of phase together over Canada and um once again, going to lead to a very breezy afternoon on Sunday through the Northeast. And uh, during the afternoon on Sunday, expect uh, some widespread uh, rain showers and maybe even snow showers in those higher elevations. So uh, you'll notice going into Sunday afternoon here, again, all clear everywhere outside of the Northeast, but we've got a big band of snow here on the kind of back end of this mid-latitude cyclone. Uh, that combined with very breezy conditions, we could almost see blizzard-like conditions in October here for some of our folks up here into southeastern Canada. So Again, um, winter just around the corner, and as we get a little bit closer to time, uh, these mid-latitude cyclones and this cold air will continue to work southward, and we'll likely see setups like this in the northeast by the time we get later on into October and into November. So, again, just a sign that we're that much closer. Uh, another thing I will mention about this system that's very important, as it continues to spin away here, we'll likely get just enough moisture off the Great Lakes here uh, that we could see some flurries, maybe even a snow shower or two in those higher elevations of uh, the Poconos, even down into the uh, upper elevations of West Virginia and Virginia could see some snow showers here going into this weekend as uh, this cold air wraps around that mid-latitude cyclone and uh, combined with some moisture off the Great Lakes. Again, could see uh, some snow showers in those higher elevations outside of there, uh, either dry or just some good old-fashioned rain showers, especially those rain showers having the best chance here uh, kind of into the northeast as that works its way off the Great Lakes. So definitely watching out for that going into this weekend. Now, that's the radar side of things. Well, what about the air? What's it going to feel like? This is our dew point map, and you'll notice as we go into tonight and tomorrow, look at these dew points come crashing down. Uh, waking up, we'll start this out tomorrow morning, actually. Let me back this up. Going into about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, on our Saturday, again, still some, uh, 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 excuse me, this is actually 8 o'clock tonight. Let me uh, move this ahead. I was going to say the timing doesn't look quite right, and that's because it's not. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Here we go, a little bit better. Uh, you'll notice that cold front sweeping on through the country and very dry air. Dew points uh, down into the 30s and even 20s on the back side of this cold front. That's going to be the driest air we've seen so far this year, and that will continue to cross uh, going into tomorrow afternoon. And by the time we get into tomorrow evening and early Sunday morning, dew 
dew points all the way down into the 40s as far south as central Florida. A place like Tampa uh, is going to go from dew points, uh, you know, in and around the 70 degree mark all the way down to the 40 degree mark. So that's a 30 degree shift in dew points. Again, it's going to go from pretty muggy weather to uh, chapstick weather very quickly. Uh, so again, some folks I'm sure are going to be very excited about that. And it's going to be very fall like. And if you're going out this week into some of those higher elevations to see the leaves, I'll tell you ahead of time, uh, it might not feel like fall. It might feel a bit more like winter. So bring a jacket. Uh, we're going to have wind chills down into the 30s and even 20s, uh, depending on how high up you get into those mountains and how far north you are as well. Very cold conditions going into this weekend. Now, in terms of temperatures themselves, again, same story, uh, just a different map here will become, uh, you know, much lower and become crashing down going into uh, the next couple of days. Tomorrow morning, again, we're going to have uh, some, you know, spring-like and summer-like morning temperatures for areas right along the eastern seaboard. But as that front crosses the Appalachian chain and into the east coast tomorrow afternoon, uh, things only warming up into the 60s uh, for afternoon highs tomorrow for a lot of folks in the southeast and only 50s for the Ohio River Valley and much of the Northeast before tomorrow night. Temperatures crash all the way back down to the 30s and 40s for a lot of folks. So again, very impressive air for this time of year. Alrighty, so talking about some of that snow up in Canada a little bit, I know I don't have really any viewers from here, but I just like talking about snow, so I'm going to show this very quickly. Our latest blend of models shows we could get, a, you know, potentially a healthy accumulation of snow, even though it is only early October, from 3 to 5 inches looking pretty likely here in this kind of bullseye here circled on your map just north of Michigan there into uh, southern sections of Canada. So again, that's a uh, time of year where that snow is becoming more and more prevalent, and likely we'll see some of these colors uh, eventually work their way south into the lower 48 as we go through the next couple of weeks and get a little bit further into fall and start knocking on the doorstep of winter. Alrighty, so going into Sunday afternoon, just to show you again how impressive some of these high temperatures are, uh, for much of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and the Midwest, temperatures only getting up into the 50s for highs on Sunday afternoon, uh, while us folks here in the southeast and mid-Atlantic, a lot of folks won't even hit 70, again, for a high temperature on Saturday. So for those college football games, uh, maybe some marching band contests out there or whatever plans you have this weekend, it's going to feel really nice. And outside of the northeast where we have that uh, rainy weather, it's going to be beautiful and sunny as well. So uh, definitely a really nice weather and uh, can't really ask for much better, honestly, this time of year. Now, going into the overnight hours, you're honestly going to really hope you got pants on and a jacket because temperature is getting down into the 30s and 40s again for a lot of folks going into um, Sunday morning here is what this map is showing. Uh, for much of the Ohio River Valley, right around 40 into the 30s and 40s for the Midwest and Northern Great Plains and even 40s as far south as the I-20 corridor down here into the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. So again, find where you live on the map to get uh, what their uh, forecast is for your exact location, but nonetheless, very uh, below average temperatures for this time of year. Alrighty, so that's a little bit about uh, kind of, you know, what we're seeing with this cold front. Let's talk about a little bit further ahead into time going into next week. So again, this front crosses on through this weekend and eventually we have that big mid-latitude cyclone up into uh, Canada going into early next week. Now what that will do is continue to provide uh, some wind energy as well as enough moisture with the Great Lakes. Uh, expect some scattered showers and again, snow showers for those extremely high elevations going into early next week for much of the Great Lakes region and the Northeast. Now, as for us folks in the southeast, the Ohio River Valley, back out into the plains, uh, expect drier conditions going into early next week before eventually a pretty potent storm system looks to work out of the Rockies. This is going into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Uh, 988 millibar low, very impressive uh, to see that. Uh, combined with high pressure off the southeast coast, we're going to get southerly flow here, and that also being combined with a system in the Gulf here. Uh, this piece of energy and this piece of energy circled on your map are going to work in tandem across the country and bring uh, some, you know, big time rain and potentially some big time severe weather depending on exactly the track of uh, this lower piece of energy. Uh, right now what I do feel confident in is we're going to have a lot of wind energy with this system going into later next week. Again very impressive here to see a uh, warm front here, very strong cold front on the backside, a lot of spinning motion here uh, thanks to you know that convergence at the surface with that low pressure. The big question is though does whatever system is down here in the Gulf kind
kind of cut off uh, that warm supply northward? That's going to be a key question. Now, if we do get clearing out here and we get uh, plenty of warm advection northward, warm and moist advection, we could have some big time severe problems later next week through uh, potentially the southeast and even the Ohio River Valley. And we definitely need to watch the trends on that. Right now, it looks like instability will be relatively low, but the wind energy is just going to be so strong. We cannot mess around with any small amount of instability with a setup like this. So definitely watching that. Uh, another thing I do feel pretty confident on is as that swings on through uh, later into next week, behind it, once again, cold and dry air take over. So uh, pretty fall-like pattern here. We've getting these very strong storm systems to cross the country, that followed by very cold and dry air. So really couldn't ask for a better weather for October. All right. So again, very active pattern ahead. We've got this cold front today, potentially big time severe weather next week, followed by a big time cool down once again uh, is leading to a very active October for at least the next week or two. But again, likely after that as well. And by the time we get through these next couple systems, it'll be about that time where some of that snow really starts working into the lower 48 outside of the higher elevations. So definitely watching that. Now, again, uh, this weekend, if you have plans, definitely get out there and enjoy them. Northeast could have some problems, but outside of there, a very nice weekend. And again, about as good as it can get for this time of year. So really get out there and enjoy it. Again, have a great rest of your Friday night, though, and I will see you all next time.